That's one of the questions I'll get um, quite a bit is what, what inspired me to write positive results. And um, it may seem a little bit ghoulish at first, but I was, um, it was a tail end of, actually it was March 31st, 2014. And um, prior to that, I'd been diagnosed with, with fourth stage melanoma. I had uh, four doctors, two of which were surgeons, told me that um, it was inoperable. Um, it was a tumor that had grown from my, my pelvis into my bladder. It had enveloped a bunch of veins, which I don't have the medical terminology to, um, to know the name of all those veins, but the surgeons told me, like, we just can't get around those veins. So um, finally, I, I found a surgeon who was willing to operate on me, and um, I felt the need, well, if he's going to operate on me, it was, it was um, there were no guarantees, but when do we ever have guarantees, right? So I said, well, I better buy a grave, get, get things ready in, in case um, the worst case scenario results. So I went down to a, a, I made an appointment to meet with a caretaker down in the uh, South Shore Cemetery. And um, as uh, ironic as it may seem, it, it actually was quite a peaceful experience. This, uh, this woman and I, we had a, uh, I think a, a pretty good synergy and she made it a very peaceful process. Um, it almost felt like I was picking out a mattress. It was just a peaceful experience. She, she drove me around, and, but it was pouring rain out. It, it, it was wet, and I was just kind of imagining what this grave or this plot would look like, you know, in the springtime or in the summertime and um, when things had, you know, come to fruition. And I guess afterwards, I just felt the need to write about it. And so, and so I did. And probably about two hours before my uh, my surgery, which would have been April 10th, 2014, I decided to send this essay out um, to my brothers and a couple of very close friends, you know, believing it in all likelihood it could be the last thing I wrote. But I wanted to tell them what they meant to me. And um, I guess as a writer, this is we do it through the written word more often than the spoken word. And um, I, I emailed it to them, and, and that was it. Probably sat in my computer for um, a year or so after that, and then another event happened in my life that brought me back to a previous battle of, uh, with cancer I had in 2005, which was also a, uh, a late-stage melanoma that I had that involved some pretty radical surgery. And as I wrote that second essay, I began to, to think of um, some of the great people in my life, whether it was neighbors or family um, or a, uh, an elderly aunt, aunt that, I, uh, that I had taken care of when, when she was in her declining years, and my, my mother and father, both of whom passed away from uh, cancer. I began a need to or, or, or was inspired to write about them as well. I was my parents' um, primary caretaker, and I just wanted to tell who they were and, and what some of the experiences were we shared. Um, during those those events, as as I say, you know, taking care of my mom and dad at the time, it was it was the best of times, but it was the worst of times, and you know, um, things worked out. You know, um, my mom and dad were together when they died. They ended up dying six days apart, both both from cancer. But they were with my mother was with my father um, during his final moments, and I held my mother's hand as she died, and both were at home. And I thought, um, you know, some of these stories might be inspiring or hopeful to, to caretakers as well because something like cancer or, or a major illness can, can really affect um, caretakers and the people around us as well. And that's uh, something I try to keep in mind or what I tried to keep in mind when I was ill is like not just how it affects me but how it affects other people. So I, I hope in the end the book is, is uh, inspirational and hopeful to people and um, it just shares some of those experiences that I hope they that the reader can take with them. It uh, writing writing positive results. It did. I w when I think of how long it took me to write, people will of, of, often ask me that question, and it took about what I say about two and a half years and a lifetime. Um, the book is <clears throat> is um, not only just about me, but the people I, I've met in life, people along the way. One, one of one of my stories is a. Um, about a, uh, a custodian I worked with in high school and college who was a World War II veteran. He was my mentor. My first real big boy job, if you will, 
um, in, into the world of, of being a wage earner and a taxpayer. And uh, what an inspiration he was, was to me. <clears throat> and so, um, I, like, like I said, two and a half years in a, in a lifetime, um, I had put positive results. I mean, uh, my first essay, The Grass Door, which I spoke about a little bit earlier about picking up, uh, picking out my, my uh, gravesite, and that um, was in, in the computer for about a year. And then um, as I decided to, to write more stories, um, it took me about another year and a half to pull together uh, about another 11 stories. So there were 12 stories in, in, the, in the volume. And uh, two and a half years sounds like a long time, but in the nonfiction world for an author, where biographies can take five or ten years to write. Uh, two and a half years is not really a long time. But um, when you look back at a point in your life where you were fighting for two and a half months, you know, uh, with these, these uh, late stage battles of cancer I had, um, two and a half years <laughs> does seem like a long time. But, um, you know, as a writer, if you do a page or two a day, you, you, can, you can get it done. It's just being, I think, disciplined and structured to, to get these, um, these pages on, on paper. And if you don't do it, no one else will. So that's my advice to authors. In, in, in Positive Results, I do write an essay about my father, um, John McAleer, who taught at Boston College for more than half a century. And uh, just to give you a little, a little background on him, he's one of those World War II BC guys who, who um, actually entered Boston College as a freshman in 1941. Um, he enlisted in the U.S. Army during World War II and I believe was shipped out in about March of 1943. Uh, when he finishes up his service with the Army, he comes back and he finishes up his degree. So his, his ed education, like a lot of students at Boston College at the time during World War II, it was split by the war and they come back and they finish. So he actually finished his education in 1947, but is considered the class of 45. So like a lot of GIs at the time, they had the GI Bill, he decided to get more education. So he got his master's in English literature at Boston College. And when he, uh, while he was doing that, he started teaching at, at Boston College. Um, and he taught from 1947 until the early 50s. He went on to get his PhD in English literature at Harvard University. And then he was, after that, he was invited back by the Jesuits here at Boston College to teach, a, to teach here. And he never looked back. He, he actually taught until the day he died. Uh, he and I actually were teaching a course, a crime fiction course in the Woods College. Um, I was assisting him at the time. And this was in the fall of 2003. And he actually passed away during the course. And I, I finished it up that year. And um, uh, but one of the reasons I, I wanted to, to write about my father is not only was he my father and I was his, his caretaker in his declining years, his last 10 years here at Boston College, he was battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and during that, my mother was battling breast cancer toward, towards the end of that. Um, and uh, just as an aside, the, these, were, these were two two kids who knew each other from North Cambridge since they went you know, since they were, they, were, they were children, so they had known each other their whole lives. Um, but after my father passed away, his oncologist from Dana-Farber called me because um, he knew that I was, I, I was my father's primary caretaker. And he said, you know, I want you to know something about your father, that he was not, a, not an easy patient to treat. He goes, um, during the semester at Boston College, he refused to be treated because he never wanted it to interfere with his teaching. So I thought that was important for people to know that, for my father, that um, his profession came first, the students came first, even at the cost of, <clears throat> you know, being treated for cancer, and that it was important enough for his doctor to actually call me and tell me this. And so I thought that was, um, you know, one of the, the lasting gifts I, I think a teacher gives is the people throughout their lives that they have educated. and you know, carry on what they were taught by the professors and faculties at, you know, institutions like Boston College. And I thought, well, this is something I think people need to know that he did, including um, Boston College, his students, and of course, um, my family. 
and I would not have known that. Um, he, he never told anybody. I just heard from his, from his doctor. And um, I think that's, that's one of the legacies he leaves Boston College and, and his students, whether they know it or not. And so, important to write about. This is a, uh, a personal and, and emotional book. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I had two major battles with cancer and, and to write some of the things that, that I went through, um, you know, depression, a, a feeling of worthlessness, a feeling of you're not afraid to die, you're afraid to live because you think you'll never be a productive member of, of society. Um, because medication can do this to you. Um, you see your body rotting away, you see hair falling out, um, you've lost your fastball, um, so to speak. And to be honest with you, when I was writing the book, I was just, I was just happy that I, that I was able to get on paper what, what I uh, was feeling at the time when I was writing, but also being able to recall some of these events. And some of them were subconscious. I, I, I never would have thought of, them, thought of them again unless I had started writing. And the subconscious, I mean, I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that happened. And with my second essay, it's called That Bottom Drawer on the Left, um, I had uh, something happened in my life um, where I, 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 uh, I never would have uh, thought of again. I had opened up a, a bottom drawer on a, um, on a desk I have in, in my cellar and I was like, well, I wonder what's in that bottom drawer. Maybe I'll find, you know, you put things away and you put clutter away and, and uh, you think you'll remember where it is and then, then you don't. So I opened this drawer, I go, I wonder what's in there. Maybe I'll find something cool. And it was just, it was a pair of, of sparring gloves that I had bought during my first battle with cancer when I was trying to get back in shape. And um, I was like, my gosh, I, I never would have thought of those gloves again. And at the time, they were so important to me because I was just trying to get my strength back and my wind back. And I was thinking, I, I almost felt bad for the gloves that they were such an important part of my recovery process. And here I am just throwing them in, in this drawer and forgetting about them and that this was this this transitional object came back into my life and believe it or not I got I got an essay just out of those those sparring gloves but I think they were a metaphor for some of the things and and some of the people we forget who got us back on our feet and um, I wanted to to share that story um, but in terms of having concerns about it wasn't so much the writing but then once I was done and was just about to publish it. I'm like, should I do this? And I was like, you know what, I, I have to. And so it wasn't really until it was actually published and released that I'm like, oh, oh no, should, should, I, should I have told all these personal things? But for, for better or for worse, the die has been cast and um, I'm, I'm glad I did it. I, I, I can't look back and um, hopefully it will um, serve its purpose. Okay, so what do I have on the burner now? I actually just finished, um, I just published a volume of um, short stories. I was the co-editor with, with a mystery writer, um, Paul Marks, and we published Coast to Coast, Private Eyes, Sea to Shining Sea, and this is an anthology I'm involved with. And we, um, this one is, um, concerns private investigators. So all story, all the stories are about private investigators, but they had to be from major cities because we wanted to give kind of a, a, a good, um, uh, you know, sprinkling of, of venue for, for the reader so they could visit all, you know, many different uh, cities and, and towns throughout the country. So we have 15 authors who are in this. So right now, Paul Marks and myself, who is uh, a, a fellow from the West Coast, he's a, he's a mystery writer. Um, he, he and I now are, are kicking around the idea for a third volume of the Coast to Coast series. So we're trying to finalize a presentation now for our publisher and uh, we're hoping that that will be received well. And um, I'm finishing up some revisions on my dog's memoir. My dog wrote a memoir and it's all told in her voice. And I am the interpreter of this memoir. So um, she was a, believe it or not, a three-legged Labrador who uh, I rescued from the pound. She passed away a few years ago. Um, but I'm, I'm now finishing that up and hopefully I can find a home for, for her memoir and her wonderful life. And, um, 
And that, that is about it. I'm thinking of, of more essays all the time for perhaps a second volume in, in positive results. Um, as I say, the subconscious is always working and I uh, sometimes think of, of things and uh, events and people that got me through both these battles with cancer and, uh, and um, there, there's something I'd, 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 I'd like to tell more. But that, that, that it, other than, other than a day job, which I'm not able to quit yet, I'm uh, keeping, keeping my fingers on the, uh, on the keys.